Hey, what's up, everyone? All right, happy Sunday. Let's jump into the watch list here. Um, and what I did here is I ran my scans on Thinkorswim, and I ran my scans here um, on the Simpler Scanner, which is really awesome. So in terms of the Simpler Scanner, I pretty much mainly focus on two things. So there's the weekly scans, which is pretty straightforward. I'm looking for weekly squeezes. I'm looking for you know, just good-looking weekly trends. So I run those scans and, you know, the Apples the Amazons, etc. That's what's coming up in the weekly scans. And then as far as um, the focus scans here, which are pretty much just going to scan for squeezes on daily or three-day time frames. Um, but this was actually built, um, I don't want to say for me, but it was built with uh, a little bit of my personal criteria that I apply to trading daily squeezes. So these are the three scans that I've run today. Uh, daily bullish continuation, Bullish because we're in a bear market. Uh, bullish because we're in a bull market, obviously. Um, and then I did the three-day bullish continuation as well. So, um, I mean, long story short, a lot of really good-looking setups. So we could sit here for, you know, an hour, an hour and a half and go through each of them. To make things pretty simple, here's what I would leave you with as an overall focus over the next month or so. Um, first and foremost is going to be technology. And we can just look at the chart of the queues. So this is pretty much, I mean, crazy, crazy trend. So while there isn't a daily squeeze, uh, you know, here in tech, we're, we're not crazy extended. So uh, no daily squeeze, but if we flip it to a three-day time frame, we just started the fire of this three-day squeeze. So there could be plenty of momentum left just from that alone. And then if we look at a weekly chart, as of last week, we are now firing a weekly squeeze to the upside. And typically, a good weekly squeeze could be good for a month, a month and a half of momentum. So is it the picture-perfect daily squeeze at the 21 EMA? No, it's not. And we could dip here, but I think into December, January, the weekly squeeze in technology should continue to fire long should give us plenty of opportunity here. So in terms of tech uh, in terms of tech setups that I am liking here, we covered a few of these on Friday, but first and foremost here is going to be Apple. Good looking daily squeeze, good looking three day squeeze, and there's a squeeze here on the weekly chart. So the thought process is if the overall market just continues to trend into December, January, and you have weekly squeezes on the S&P and the QQQ. So put it this way. If the weekly squeezes can fire or can continue to fire to the upside uh, for the indexes, it's going to be good for the overall market. Then thinking in terms of technology, this is obviously one of the stronger trends in the market. But that should continue to trade higher as well. And then Apple being the biggest component of tech should be positioned for some good upside. So the goal here is to uh, let's see, take a daily chart. You know, the goal here now with all the squeezes is to build the positions now. That way, if the weekly, uh, the weekly squeeze does fire uh, three, four, five, six weeks from now, you're already, uh, you're already catching the move. Versus Apple starts to break out, and you're chasing it up here at 160. So you might have to sit through a little bit of a chop fest. But I argue build your position in the squeeze. Hang on tight so long as the squeeze holds structure. And then if the trending continues, you should get rewarded. So Apple Weekly Squeeze, I think, is a beauty. Um, and we got a position here in my mastery with January 21st expiration put credit spreads. And our short strike is right there at 150. So I think Apple looks awesome here. Um, along the same lines is Amazon. There's a squeeze here on the monthly chart, the weekly, the three-day, the daily, the four-hour, etc., so same thought process. If the market continues to trend higher, technology should play a big role. I think Amazon here with all these squeezes could be poised for, a, I think, a pretty big push higher. Um, you know, might sound a little bit uh, of a stretch right now. Weekly squeeze fires long. I think eventually Amazon getting up here to 4K. Definitely, uh, you know, it's definitely doable. And my goal is to build a position now and take the entire ride up to 4,000 if it unfolds versus chasing it once it breaks out here. So 
monthly, weekly, three day, daily, four hour. There's your squeeze everywhere. But for Amazon, let's take a look here. Uh, same expiration, January 21st. And in my mastery on Friday, we sold put credit spreads with the short strikes at 3350. And then I've got another position on my own here with short strikes at 3400. So Apple, Amazon, and last but not least here for tech, Netflix. Now this one could be a little bit tricky. Got a pretty big push into Friday. So depending where we open tomorrow, pretty much here I'm looking for a move through 700. So if we open up tomorrow at 690, I really can't suggest uh, you chase it at that point. But if we do happen to get a dip here, maybe back towards plus one or back towards the AEMA, I think you look to build a position. Great looking trend, whole bunch of bullish momentum, good structure here, 21 EMA. It's this four hour squeeze though. Oh, we don't have a four hour just yet. Hmm, interesting. Uh, long story short, I think it's gearing up for a move into 700. I wouldn't chase it. It's 685, 690. If it dips early this week, I think you have it on your radar. So that pretty much has you covered there as far as the FANG stocks go. Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and then last but not least here, Google. Which did come in a little bit last week, so you're at the daily buy zone. The squeeze here is on the three-day time frame. So the market continues to rally into December, January. I think technology and communications potentially do very much the same, which should put Google here in a good position to see higher prices. So I'd wait for a dip here on Google, but technology definitely one of the stronger trends in the market. And just in terms of weighting across the board, obviously it's a huge component. So Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Google, I like them all here. I've got Amazon, Apple, and Netflix. So that's technology. Um, but looking at the S&P 500 here, you know, this isn't just uh, a technology party. As a matter of fact, I think it's actually tough right now to go through the different sector ETFs and find something that's looking uh, bearish. Everything looks pretty good here. Outside of technology, though, my favorites are energy and the financials. So... Straightforward here with energy, good looking trend as of late. There's your brand new daily squeeze. Get the green 10x bars, got our stacked EMAs. Now I don't think we have squeezes on bigger time frames. Uh, nothing on the three day, nothing on the weekly here. So you're working with a daily squeeze, but I think a good looking trend. So, you know, would I take a huge position here? Or, or a better way to word it is, would I take um, you know, as big of a position here in energy? Is I might in an Amazon? Potentially not. And reason being, you know, Amazon is just so heavily weighted within the QQQ, and obviously technology um, is just heavily weighted across the board. But in terms of, you know, where can I put 25 to 5% of my account to work? I kind of like energy here for some continuation. So I think, um, let's see. Um, your your 50 period simple moving average is down here at 54 and change. I think it's a good looking daily structure, and I think you hold on to long positions and add to them all the way down to the 50. Um, now the question here is, what could we do with a credit spread? So let's see, 55 short strikes. Um, go three bucks wide here. This is a little funky. 52.21. Um, but sell the 55, buy the 52.21, um, 86 cents a credit. Yeah, okay. Not quite a 2 to 1 risk reward ratio, but we're not going to uh, nickel and dime ourselves here. It's close enough. Not the best spread, uh, not the worst spread, but that's kind of right on my alley. Uh, I mean, in a nutshell, that's kind of my go to trade. Find an uptrend, find a squeeze. Sell some out the money, put credit spreads. So with your 50 period simple moving average here at 54, short strikes at 55, I kind of like that. Um, hmm. Now I'm running the scans here. Obviously it's a good looking structure. I'm pleasantly surprised that there's some pretty good premium on the put side of things out till January. Might have to do something with that tomorrow. 
Um, but energy's a good-looking group here. So, oh, there's my YouTube. I would look to just trade XLE. You could go with um, an Exxon Mobil. You could go with a Chevron. You could go with an EOG. The, you know, birds of a feather should flock together kind of thing here. Keep it simple. I think you go with XLE. But good trend, good structure, good momentum. There's your daily squeeze. If I can lock in that 2 to 1-ish risk award ratio, selling those short puts in a spread down there at 55, I'm pretty interested. So I'll be looking at that tomorrow, and then you know, along with technology and energy here, you've got your Frisket financials. Now, not only is the not only does energy and the financials have you know, really good looking setups, as I'm running those scans here tonight, so many of the scan results were financial stocks and energy stocks. And any time I see that, I'm going to pay a bit more attention. For those of you in my mastery, y'all should remember we traded the daily squeeze back here in real estate. And again, it's pretty straightforward, good looking trend, good looking squeeze. But remember, as we're running our scans, so many of the scan results were stocks in the real estate sector. So there was PSA, public storage, there was um, AMT, etc., etc. So anytime you got a sector in a squeeze, and then all the leading names in the squeeze as well, it's gearing up for what's typically my favorite thing to swing trade, which is a group move. Now, you can just keep it simple and look to trade the ETF itself. What I'm just saying is there's a little bit more edge here when, you know, for... With the financials, for example, if we look at a Bank of America or a Goldman or a J.P. Morgan, they've all got the same structure. So I like that. When that's lining up, you might go on ahead there and catch yourself a group move. Um, but for the financials, let's see, 50 SMA down here near 40. So the question is, January 21st expiration, does a put credit spread make sense here? It makes sense in my book. Two to one risk reward ratio. You put a 50% stop on that bad boy. It's pretty much a one to one. So, no, that works. You could buy calls. You could do a debit spread. You can get funky with it. The uh, the major, you know, what's most important here is the squeeze. So you found an uptrend. You found a squeeze. You found this during an overall bullish market. You take your weapon of choice. My weapon of choice typically is going to be the put credit spreads. But um, there you have it, my friends. Again, so much of the thought process here, at least for me, is I'm looking to build swing positions. But I'm looking to go out till you know, late December, January with my expiration date. Because the thought process is the uptrend in the overall market should continue into December, January, February. But with the market being a little bit extended there is just a potential for a couple little dips along the way. So you find a good trend, you build a position, you go with January expiration, you shouldn't be all that impacted if there's a couple little flushes as we go from point A to point B. And I think point B is going to be much higher. So in the pursuit of um, you know that upside here, I think technology, obviously. Um, I mean, for, for those of you that have been actively trading, if it's not Amazon taking the baton and just pumping, then it's Google, or it's Apple, or it's Microsoft. So technology, definitely a really important part of this trend. But then financials and energy, those are great looking daily squeezes. I think not to be ignored. So that's what I got for you. In terms of technology, you got Amazon, Apple, Google, Netflix. I like all four of them. Um, and then with the financial and the energy daily squeezes, my game plan would be to just trade the ETF, keep it nice and simple. But what you can do is go to ETFDB.com and then search the sector ETF. So you could search XLF and then you can see the top holdings inside uh, that basket if you're looking to pick an individual stock. But you're looking for a group move pretty much. So, you know, with the financials, for example, if over the next three weeks, uh, Goldman Sachs just explodes higher probably means that JP Morgan did the same thing probably means that a Bank of America did the same thing it's pretty much a group move which are just some of my favorites to trade here uh, but that's going to be my focus heading into this week likely going to be the focus for the next 
probably month or two months here until things drastically change. But that's what I got for you. And then I did put a post here um, the other night asking if y'all had any charts I want to take a look at. Drop them here in the comments and I can do just that. Now, let's see if we covered any of these just yet. I'm sure we covered a few of them. But I do appreciate y'all dropping the uh, the chart requests here. Um, so Mind's Eye. You got that three-day squeeze in Google. You got the weekly squeeze in the QQQ. And then if XLC, the communication sector, which Google's a pretty good chunk of, if that can at least bottom out, and it looks like it is going to bottom out here, I think Google over the next month, two, three months, should be poised for uh, for higher prices, especially with the three-day squeeze. Um, I lost you. Where did we go? Uh, my man David K. Goldman Sachs, um, and then Ronit, you're asking for Bank of America. Covered both of those there. Financials look great. Financials look awesome. So Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, um, Atomic here is looking at Bank of America as well. Anything financial here, my friends, I like it. I like it. Uh, but real quick, let's go from the top, work our way down here. Media Man. You know Media Man? Sometimes the names that don't appear is sexy. You got some opportunity there. So let's do this. We'll go through them one by one here. Um, you know, before we do this, just keep in mind, especially with me, I pretty much trade just one setup. So if I don't happen to you know, like a particular setup, that's just a me thing. What's most important is you have your criteria. So I don't take a setup, I don't take a trade, if that setup doesn't fit all of my criteria. Now, you don't have to have the same criteria as me, and I'm not saying that a different set of criteria can't work, but that's the key. You got to have those rules in place. So just keep that in mind. That's where I'm coming from. If it doesn't fit my particular set of rules, I, I can't like it kind of goes against the rules to like it, right? All right, but Media Man, you got L-E-N here. You know, I look for a dip to the 21 EMA here. So I think L-E-N, I think really anything in the home builders right now, you're looking for a dip to the 21. You know, in trading L-E-N, you're basically just trading ITB here. And this has got a really good structure. Out of nowhere almost. Kind of comes back of the vengeance. But you've got a bunch of momentum with your green 10x bars. you got stacked EMAs. The daily chart, it's a bit extended, so I do think you wait for a dip. But take the same thought process you've been applying over the last few days to you know, the Amazons, the Apples, etc. This weekly squeeze fires long. You should be looking at a month, a month and a half of momentum. So I think any pullback in ITB, any pullback in LEN, it's an opportunity to build your position for that big old wave of momentum that could be around the corner. Um, now Etsy is just jam-packed here with momentum. And I'm looking up here at the green to next bars. So monthly, weekly, three-day, daily, probably four hour down to a 30-minute, whole bunch of bullish momentum, brand new daily squeeze. I'd wait for a little bit of a dip, maybe back to your 8, maybe your 21 EMA. But in terms of structure and momentum, it's definitely viable on a dip. The question is whether or not you actually get the dip there. But I think you got all, uh, you got all the green lights you're looking for. Uh, now, based on my rules, Micron, not going to be the biggest fan of Micron. What I would say instead is, you know, we're looking at Micron, at least when I look at Micron, I'm thinking, all right, semiconductors. And if I'm thinking semiconductors, there's names like AMD, there's names like AMAT, um, there's names like Broadcom and NVIDIA <clears throat> that are in such better uptrends, um, in my opinion. They're in better uptrends, they have better structure, they have way more bullish momentum. Now the problem with these is they're crazy extended. But if I'm looking to put my cash to work anywhere in the semiconductors, I'm going to pick the two or three names in the group that have the best structure and momentum, and then I'm just going to pick my spots wisely. Now, the difficulty of that is I haven't really had a an opportunity to grab an NVIDIA or an AMD because they continue to be so extended. But that's my opinion there. Um, you know, when I think of Micron, I'm thinking, okay, we're trying to trying to get long the semiconductors now. We're just going to do it through Micron. 
So the question at that point is, is there anything better looking within the group? Um, and that's going to be personal opinion, but that's my thoughts there. Um, and then last but not least, my friend AMD. Just give me a little bit of a dip here. Because there's bullish momentum just packed into this thing as far as the eye can see. So I mean, even a dip to the 8, ideally a dip closer to the 21. I think you jump all over that. All right, King Kong has got sales for us. Good trend. Obviously, this is a great trend. Great trend. Whole bunch of bullish momentum. So monthly, weekly, three-day, daily charts are seeing an increase in bullish momentum. That's what the green 10x bars there means. Nothing bad I can say about this one. Ooh, look at the four-hour squeeze. There you go. Um, I build a position here in the four-hour squeeze, looking for that to fire to the upside, um, and looking for the trend to continue. And to get long in a four-hour squeeze after you've just finally dipped to your 21, you know, you're jumping into a squeeze here after a healthy reset. So Salesforce looks pretty solid. And then Lucid, this is going to be tough because earnings is in a few days here, but I'm looking to buy a dip. And for me, it's, you know, it's pretty simple. Weekly squeeze finally fires here. I want to take action if there's going to be that four, five, eight weeks of momentum. But we got to pick our spots wisely. And in my book, chasing it three ATR on a weekly chart, it's just not the best, uh, the best entry going. But I would buy a Lucid on a dip all day long. I think you could get back into uh, to trend mode there. Uh, and then in terms of U.S. Steel... Decent structure. Weekly squeeze, which I like. I think you can, I think you wait for a little bit of a dip here. Uh, this is what I would do, right? Because you're range bound. Last six or seven months here, you're kind of trading sideways. So I'd wait for a little bit of a dip. I'd build a position and go out to like January, February expiration with a set it and forget it kind of mentality. You've got enough momentum here that with patience, you could see the weekly squeeze fire to the upside. So I would wait for a dip, I'd plant my seed, uh, and then i come back in a month, two months, see if the weekly squeeze got the job done. You've definitely got the momentum you need here. Just a matter of whether or not it's go time. Um, all right, next up here, um, Ari Hunt. My bad if I'm butchering any names. Uh, I've got nothing on Tesla right now. I will have something for you here on Tesla if we end up going into a new daily squeeze. I'd actually drool all over myself if we got a brand new daily squeeze. The reason I say this is we're back at the 21 EMA. So when you spend two, three, four, five or so sessions just chopping near the 21, there is a potential for a brand new daily squeeze. After this crazy move and the flush and now Elon is you know, selling his shares, all that good stuff, I'm going to be a little bit patient and try to leave it alone for now, but I'll tell you this. Some point in the next couple of weeks we get a brand new daily squeeze. I am looking to latch on to that. Um, Zoom with earnings coming up here. No real opinion other than, you know, based on my criteria, it's in a downtrend. And when something's in a downtrend, I'm waiting for big bounces, and then I try to short the bounces. I wouldn't do that before earnings, though. So no real opinion there on the Zoomster. And then WDC, Western Digital. I think cleaner setups out there. So one really big thing for me is, starting with the weekly chart, I'm looking to trade uptrends. And part of my uptrend criteria is that on the weekly chart, we're trading above the 21 EMA. And we have stacked EMAs. Now WDC here doesn't have either of those. So it doesn't mean it's not poised to make a move higher. It just means because I have those particular rules. This is one that I wouldn't trade here. Alright. Keep flying through them here, y'all. Marco has got TPIC. So again, taking my weekly checklist criteria. We're under the 21 EMA. We don't have stacked EMAs and you have red 10x bars, it's in a downtrend. So I would short it after a really strong bounce here. Um, let's see, DraftKings, same thought process. 
you know, my goal as a trader is I never want to think. So to the left of me right now on my desk, I have my rules printed out. That allows me to look at a chart and in a matter of, you know, a split second, I can, it's a candidate or it's not a candidate. Based on my weekly chart checklist, under the 21, no stack DMAs, it's not a candidate to get long. If anything, shorten it after really strong bounces. Um, and we did cover Lucid. I think on Lucid, you're looking to buy the dip there. All right, Atomic. Atomic has got some Exxon Mobil here. I like it because I like energy. I'm sorry, this isn't Exxon Mobil. This is uh, oil gas. Squeeze, stack DMAs. I have to like it. It's just, it's just the rules. It's just the rules. I have to like that one there, Atomic. Um, for Arc, one I would do nothing with. Again, not based on an opinion of the product, just based on the rules. Daily chart, under the 21. No stack DMAs. It's not clean enough. I can't go long. Weekly chart, no stack DMAs. You know what I would do here, if anything? Probably just a big old iron condor. And I'm sure now that I say that, it's finally going to make some explosive move. But there's just not enough bullish momentum here, or structure, really for me to warrant getting long or short. It's pretty much just caught up in a big old chop fest. Now, down the road, though, you know, look at IWM. IWM's been chopping itself silly for a year here. Once you get going, though, you really get going. So maybe ARC, down the road, gets going. Um, and then Atomic, Bank of America, pretty much anything in the financials here, I'm going to like it. And this is a beauty. This is a beauty. All right, y'all, but I think we got everything covered there. Let me go through one more time. And, yes, we do. So we'll do the same thing again next weekend, um, Friday afternoon on... Uh, the YouTube channel here, I'll put up a post. Y'all can put any chart requests that you have. And we'll take a look. But I like what a lot of y'all are focusing on. Um, Teslas, the Lucids, um, financial stocks, energy stocks, semiconductors, technology. All good stuff. All good stuff. But that's what I got for you tonight. We should have best of luck this week. Um, as a reminder, I'm going to be live tomorrow morning here on the YouTube channel for our pre-market prep. So come join us at 8.45 a.m. Eastern. But I wish you the best of luck this week. So my focus primarily is definitely going to be you know, on the FANG stocks, the Apples, the Amazons, and Netflixes. Um, and I've already got some exposure there, so obviously I'll be paying attention. But energy, um, financials, heck, look at real estate, IYR. There's a lot of good-looking structure out there um, outside of technology. So I feel like in my own account, um, in the mastery, we're getting pretty well positioned here in technology. Um, I want to get the options room in some Apple, some Amazon. But once we're positioned nicely there, energy, financials, I'd like me a little bit of that as well. But good stuff here, my friends. 30-minute video, so I hope you all find this useful. And I will see you tomorrow morning. Talk to you then.